Here we go. All right. If you remember yesterday, or even if you don't remember yesterday, <clears throat> we're talking now about <clears throat> this week's Torah portion and how it is connected to the future redemption. And the Rebbe asked that at first glance, it seems that our Torah reading this week by Yigash is exactly the opposite of the future redemption. In the future redemption, it says that the Mashiach will come from the tribe of Yehuda. And that Yehuda from David, King David. And that King David from the tribe of Yehuda, he is going to be the king of all Israel. And he will unite with all the other ten tribes, which they basically are called Yosef or Ephraim. <clears throat> And as it is now, and as it was in the time of the prophecy of Ezekiel, when he gave this prophecy, which that's the Haftor of this week's, in this, on Shabbat, we'll read it. <clears throat> then there was a big division in, 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 in Israel between the 10 tribes and the other two tribes. 10 tribes were Ephraim, the leader was Yeruvim ben Nevat, and other leaders came after him. There was how many leaders? I don't know, I have to look and see, 15, some leaders that came after him. That was a whole different kingdom. <clears throat> and that was destroyed. That was destroyed like 150 years before the destruction of the temple by Shalmansar or something. He came down and he conquered the 10 tribes. Nobody knows where they are to this very day. There's a lot of theories. Some people say the American Indians. Some people say all the English people. Uh, there's all these theories who the 10 tribes are. <clears throat> anyway, only Mashiach is going to reveal who they are and bring them back. I don't know how that's going to be because that was over, <clears throat> you know, 2,800 years ago, something like that. These people have been away from home. So, okay, we'll talk about that. Anyway, the 10 tribes. In the future, the, all the tribes will be united. Mashiach will unite them all. and he'll be. But the Mashiach is going to be from Yehuda. He's going to be the leader. And Yosef will be under him. And this week's Torah portion, we see exactly the opposite. That Yosef is the leader. And Yehuda, he's coming up to Yosef, begging, <clears throat> begging, threatening, whatever he's begging, in a forceful way. To, to let them go, let Benjamin go. Okay, so <clears throat> how was that? So the Rebbe explains like this. <clears throat> In our Torah portion, our Torah portion is called Vayigash, that, that Yehuda, he comes to Yosef, right? Yosef is the king. And so he says, there's a couple minutes over there, if you, if you notice, right in the beginning, that Yehuda is very, very forceful. He says, Al-Yichar Do not get mad at me. Rashi says, from here we see that he was very forceful. He was threatening. Yehuda was threatening Yosef. Yehuda had absolutely nothing. He was outnumbered a million to one. Who knows how many to one? He was in the, the chamber of Yosef. He couldn't run away. Yosef was obviously surrounded by guards and by, by soldiers and policemen. And he came forcefully to Yosef. It says in those couple minutes when he came forcefully to Yosef, he didn't know Yosef was his brother. It says that shows the true defiance of the Jewish people. And it's with that power of defiance and that the Jews succeeded in Egypt. And with that power of defiance, Mashiach will come. <clears throat> so the Rebbe said, okay, how, how is this going to be exactly? How, how is this going to happen? What's going what's to be? So the Rebbe says, let's take a little bit of a look. I mean, first of all, what's going to, Mashiach is going to come and he's going to rule the whole entire world. I mean, there's a lot of people in the world. You know, Mashiach is just one person. How is it possibly going to work? How? So he says, well, listen, you know, <clears throat> it's going to be a miracle. Good, a miracle, but, you know, good, it's a miracle. So it means there won't be any more world anymore. A miracle. God wants to make a miracle. He can just zap everybody. He doesn't have to zap anybody. Just stop creating everybody. Stop creating everybody. And that's all. There won't be any more people. There won't be any more of this. There'll just be a couple of Jews, and that's all. Huh? Why does it, but God doesn't want that. If he wanted that, he would have done it a long time ago. God wants there to be a world. And he wants the world to be filled with people that have free will. And that have different natures and different personalities, <clears throat> different potentials and different families and different houses and different jobs and different the character. That's what God wants. He wants a real, active, dynamic, living, vital world. 
That's what he wants. Okay, so we got the same problem. How is Mashiach going to kind of convince everybody? He says, the Rebbe says, okay, let's go. There's a Midrash. And the Midrash is talking about Purim. And the Midrash is talking about Purim, and it says that the meal that Ahasuerus made for Haman and <clears throat> Mordechai, he made it for everybody, Ahasuerus. And it says, Lasot kiratzon ish ve'ish. That Ahasuerus wanted to please everybody. He wanted to please Mordechai and uh, Haman. Okay, there's two Midrashim that say <clears throat> opposite things. One says the Gomorrah says, why did Ahasuerus want to do that? Because he was stupid. He was a fool. You can't please the most righteous person in the world, the most evil person in the world. The most righteous person in the world wants that the whole world should be good. He wants that there should be life. He wants to be all these things that I just spoke about. And that there should be individuality and everybody should have their own opinion and everybody should do, worship God in their, according to their personality and according to this and realize that. And what does Haman want? That everybody should do what he wants. Forget about personality. Forget about you do what I way, my way or the highway. How do they say you? Either you do it my way or you get killed. Haman wanted the world to be a bad place. Uh, he was a death worshiper, life, death. Right? You kill all the Jews. And what did Mordechai want? Wanted, Mordechai, was, he wanted the creator. He wanted a, a world of life. More the, the more the better. How can you have both together? A world <clears throat> filled with bad and a world filled with good. How can it possibly be? So he said, well, how can it possibly be? He can't, says the Gomorrah, that it can't be, that he did it because he was a fool. According to the Midrash, there's a Midrash, though, that says that no, that Ahasuerus was talking about in the future. When Mashiach comes, God is going to do big miracles, and everything is going to be together. The world will be the way that Mordechai wants and the way that Haman wants. How could this possibly be? Let's see. <clears throat> so it says, the explanation is, Ahasuerus, we're going to skip this one. Ahasuerus, in his source, is referring to God. When it says in the Megillah, Ahasuerus, it's also referring to God. Why? Like the rabbis say, Ahasuerus, this is Kodesh Baruch Hu. The rabbis say, Sheacharit v'reshit shalom. Achat is from after the last. Rosh in the beginning, the end and the beginning are his. Ken yisad ha-melech lasot kirason ish ve'ish. When it says that the king is going to make that everybody's going to be happy, this is talking about God. God is going to make an order in the world Everyone will choose to go the way Mordechai wants or the way Haman wants. If a person wants to be righteous, he can do it. If he wants to be bad, then he can also do it. Oh, that's one answer. Right? God gave free will. That everyone has the free power to choose. <clears throat> huh? That's one answer. Says the Rebbe, eh, it's an answer, but it's not such a good answer. Why? This is only in regard to the potential that there is such a thing as bad and good, and you can choose. <clears throat> a person can Choose whatever Moshe Enkin, which is not because that's not what it that's not what it says. It says la sot karatzon ishfish. That the world not just potentially can be every how you want it to be, it can be actually that both Haman and Mordechai will be happy. Lo yacholit batzel b'pol. That you can't do. Kiratzon Mordechai because Mordechai wanted holiness, and Haman wanted exactly the opposite. Ubemela lo yatachen. It can't possibly be that these two wills. That they should actually be done. Right? You can't have an abortion and have a child at the same time. Right? There's no, you can't do both. Ah, yeah, yeah. If you have an abortion, I'll be free. You have a child, then the child will be free. Right? That you can grow a child that you have to put. It's a lot of trouble to grow up children. <clears throat> right? I don't want the trouble. So have an abortion. There has an abortion. Oh, now I feel free. But what about the child? Oh, yeah. So I'll have a child. You can't do both. <clears throat> Oh, she kind of rots on 
uh, Mordechai or the will of Haman. Haman want, Mordechai wants life. He wants holiness in the world. And Haman wants death. He wants huh? confusion in the world. Even more, Mastira la sotke ratzon ish ve'ish. That what it says to do like everybody wants. That it's impossible to do two opposites. Even more. Ratzon Mordechai Bahaman. Not only is it doing two opposites, but it's <clears throat> these are two totally, how do you say what is it? The, 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 what's, what the, the, the diametric opposites. Oh. Shekol Achat Sholelet Lagamri Lichyoro I mean, I'm not I'm gonna say something that's not gonna be nice, but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's like the world should go according to the Lubavitcher Rebbe or according to Hitler. Both, same time. You can't find two bigger opposites than that. <clears throat> What's on Mordechai? What did Ron Mordechai wanted? Mordechai wanted the Luyichrabaloyishtachabe that he would not bow down in any way. He would not in any way <clears throat> give in to what Haman wanted. Like the rabbis say, Almasha Mordechai Nikra, that why is he called Yehudi? That's why he was called Yehudi. That's where the word Yehudi comes from, by the way. And the first time the word Yehudi is used in the Tanakh is in the Megillah of Esther, Yehudi. Except for that, Jews are called Bnei Yisrael, it's called uh, Am Yisrael, Yeshurun, Yaakov. Yehudi, that's the first time. Yehudi, why? Hashem Shekofer Bavod Zorah. Anyone who denies idolatry is called a Jew. Yehudi. And we'll see that idolatry has very, very, uh, how do you say, uh, uh, <clears throat> it's very refined levels of idolatry. And even that, a Jew rejects. Lochen, therefore, is selfishness. Basically, idolatry is selfishness. Lochen, therefore, Nikra Kalachabecha, therefore, each Jew is called a Yehudi. Why? Because a Jew is that he kofar votive zora of lo yichrav lo He will not bow down to idolatry. And those Jews that do change the religions or whatever, they, they, they have an excuse. They make an excuse. Or they, or they, we see that all the Jews did bow down to the, the, the golden calf. They liked it. They had an excuse. It's just our leader. It's a, this. Everybody had that. We're under pressure. But you do, and it's known. This is not just regular idolatry, bowing down to a person or to a statue or something. Ella called davar she'enu kashur. Anything, we, now we have this is what we're talking about. Anything which is not selfishness, which is not connected to serving God, even if it's not the opposite of the Shulchan Aruch, this is also called idolatry. Right? A person learns Torah, he learns, he does, knows the whole Torah, but he's an egotist. He's an egotist. He thinks he's better than everybody else. That's called idolatry. <clears throat> <clears throat> a person's lazy, owes somebody money, doesn't want to pay him back the money. He's a religious person, does Torah, does commandments, has all these excuses. Why? That's idolatry. It's, a, it's very fine. You don't get punished for it. But nevertheless, in, in your soul, you know it's there. <clears throat> it's idolatry, right? You're fooling yourself. This is why is it called idolatry? In Hebrew, the word idolatry is avoda zora, service, which is strange. Avoda shezara lo. Service, which is strange, it's how do you say extraneous? It's uh, it's it's uh, it's not relevant to a, a Jew. Adavar zara liyudi, it's not a Jewish thing. McCaven sins. She calling Yeshua Yehudi. The whole thing of a Jew is to just to do what God wants, like the rabbi says. Like the rabbi say, I was not created. and I was only created in order to serve God, my Creator. Uh, God is creating me all the time. I should give him a little bit of a little of appreciation, a little bit. Uh, and so, th th therefore, God's creating me all the time. So I should serve him all the time, at least in thinking about him. Hey, yo, because you're nivreti, because of the reason that I was created. Call rega every instant of the, of a person in this world. Hari muvan should call prat that everything that he does, but call rega in every instant should be l'shamish koni. If God is creating me all the time, so why shouldn't I? And connect myself to the truth. Not only that's God's pretty good. I mean, if He's creating me, that's pretty good. You know, it's better than like putting a hundred dollars into my bank account every five minutes or every minute or a thousand dollars into my God is giving me eyes to see every second, ears to hear, and not just me, everybody in the world. We should all God wants is that I should serve him. What does it mean to serve him? 
<clears throat> just everything I do, do it the way he wants. Have a family, have a job, have, have fun, be happy. Just has to be the way that God wants. Like the Torah says, and in the end, that becomes the best way. Huh? That becomes the best way to do things. <clears throat> a person that has a happy family, is happy with his wife and his children, there's no happiness in the world like that. Right? He can go around to all the nightclubs and all of this and have a great time until he becomes right, until he becomes, you know, 50, 60 years old, and that's it. Right? That's it. All of a sudden he realizes that everything, all of this, it's, it's not, there's nothing there. It wasn't genuine. It was just a dream. The Torah says, call Masecha, everything you do should be the sake of heaven. And everything you do, you should know God. That's called serving God. Anything which is extraneous to that, even a little bit. Is called idolatry. It's not punishable. We're not the Rebbe is not talking in this whole thing about punishments. Huh? Rarely, rarely, rarely do you see in the hundreds of thousands of pages of Hasidut mention anything about hell or heaven. Once in a while, it's talked. I mean, the Talmud is that there is such a thing, but it's not supposed to be part of our how do you say motivation. Call a masim everything that you do. <clears throat> Shekal Masa Ba'atzmo, not only that, everything should be, <clears throat> every, everything you do should be for the sake of heaven. Shari Im Yeshno Dover, if there's an additional, something outside of this, that's called strange service. It's outside, alien. Shari Zeo Heipech, this is the opposite of why I'm being, why I'm being created. Va'ad Shlemus was there until this, Masecha is the Shem Shemayim, until it comes out to that everything that you do, is not just for the sake of heaven, but everything is all of your ways and all of your, how do you say, the, the, the conduct should be do'eu, you should know God. Even heavens themselves, shamayim atzmam, right? Do'eu, you should know him. Al derech achilu v'shtia, shizui gufa the mitzvah, Mrs. Onig Shabbat, even the pleasure that a person gets, <clears throat> the shame, not just for the shame Shemayim, that you should know, you should feel, you should be connected. This is within the ability of every person. I mean, and, the, and God's creating us, so he's infinitely close to us. Just a little appreciation. And that's what, this is what Mordechai wants. That's what it means that Mordechai did not bow down, and he didn't bend, and he didn't bow down to Haman. Not only didn't bow down to Ahmed, he didn't bow down to anything in the world, even things that are permissible according to the Shulchan Aruch. He didn't make that his main thing. Since that everything that is not for, done for the sake of God, this is called idolatry. That's what Mordechai wants. What does Haman want? Haman wants exactly that, Avodah Zorah. <clears throat> not just uh, Avodah Zorah, idolatry really, but he wants that everything which is strange, which is extraneous, which is alien to, to Judaism, to God, that's good for him. Because he's not serving God, he, what he wants is since we're found in the world and we're found in exile, he said because we're in the world and we're under nature, and who created the nature? God created nature. Therefore, you have to go according to nature, at least regarding <clears throat> the permissible things and things in the world. <clears throat> Nimsa so comes, you want to be religious, be religious. But when it comes to the world, right? It comes to, you have a desire to be religious, so fulfill your desires. But when it comes to the world, <clears throat> you're missing something. You're missing something. You have to, Ratzon Ishvish, you have to do what you want, your main thing. Ratzon Mordechai Bahaman. Okay, so how can you do both of them, Mordechai and Haman? They're two opposites. Diametric opposites, like they say, Shehudi, that a Jew is found in this world and in, in the world, and he's found in exile. Like it says, even now, we are the slaves of Ahasuerus. That's why we don't say Halil on Purim, because even now we're slaves of, of, of Haman, of Ahasuerus. Sham, Yesha, Hagbalu Shonus, Mitzar Hanagas Ateva, Pa'olam, Vachukia Medina. A Jew is found in a country. So he has that certain things you have to do according to the country. You have to carry an identification card. <coughs> Dina the Mahuta Dina. The law of the king, kingship is little. You're in England, you have to drive on the left side of the street. You're in America, you have to drive. Yeah, there are certain things you must do in the countries. How, according to the country. She'ena Bestira, 
that don't contradict Torah and the commandments. Shemachrichim oto, that's necessary to do according to what God wants and according to the Torah wants, to do in a certain way. As I then, it's impossible. So lo yitachen l'kiyum k'ritzon ish v'ish. It's not possible to do what each person wants. Mordechai says you shouldn't bow down, you shouldn't bend. Shekein called the bar. Anything which is outside of serving God is idolatry. So if so, <clears throat> if you you have to act like the country acts, lechiora shole lo rakiyum ratzon haman b'poel ela gam kol gishes shetzerach litchashet b'minog yishal olam. You might think that what does Mordechai want? Mordechai says you have to serve God all the time. Anything which is not connected to serving God all the time, you just keep away from. So that, what about driving on the left side of the street? Right? So don't buy a car. Go on the, go on the subway. Well, one second, maybe you're in the subway. As, uh, maybe you'll brush against a woman. Maybe you're in the same room. So don't take a subway. Get a job near to your house. Don't go out of your house. Work from in your house. Maybe you might think that's the way it is. On the other hand, if you do reckon with what the customs of the country are, and be, be, why? Because God sent us into exile. So therefore, maybe we do have to do a little bit like what Haman wants. Meduda, that we have to act according to the way the world wants. <clears throat> if it doesn't go against Torah and mitzvahs. Okay, Avo become, this is the novelty. If a person is really tied to God, in a way which is above any conduct with the world, you can actually join two opposites together. You can be in the world, but nevertheless you can also be you won't bow down, you won't bend. Because you're totally above this. <clears throat> this is sort of the, the motivation you know in Chabad we don't dress that differently from everybody else this is the way always that, that it always was but and there's other, other groups you know of uh, Bells and Satmar and these others and they dress totally different from everyone else they wear white stockings whatever it is anyway they, they dress different they have different hats they have different long things they, they have long coats the tzitzis they wear out Right? In a way, this is a very good thing because what are they doing? They're saying, I'm going to be like a Jew and I'm going to remind myself that I'm a Jew, but I'm going to be in the world. I'm going to walk down the streets like everybody else. And I'm going to, <clears throat> you know, the, 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 the talk on the phone like everybody else. <clears throat> I'm going to drive on the right side, proper side of the street like everybody else does. Right? <clears throat> the customs of the country, they'll do. But nevertheless, Judaism, they're not going to leave not even one iota. The custom in Chabad is that we don't, I mean, we do wear a hat and, 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 and keep them, we have a beard and things like this. But the, okay, that's our custom. But nevertheless, the, the idea behind the whole thing, that's what the Rebbe is trying to say. <clears throat> that you can be like Haman, not going against the Torah, but you can be in the world, but totally connected to Torah. Now, here's a very tricky thing. And the Rebbe is going to talk about this. And if you're in the world, so it means that you sort of did give into the world a little bit. You gave in. So maybe we should try to find out ways to give into the world a little bit more. In other words, you can't do anything that's forbidden according to the Torah, but in the Torah itself, there's a lot of leniencies. Huh? There's a lot of leniencies. Ways. Let's take an example. Taking in Shabbat. When Shabbat comes in. So there's some opinions that Shabbat comes in like a half an hour, whatever it is, earlier than other opinions. Then there's some opinions that Shabbat goes out later than other opinions. That's very severe. You take Shabbat in early and it goes out late, so you can't do it. But then there's also other opinions that say, no, Shabbat comes in very late, the last minute, and Shabbat goes out very early. <clears throat> oh, so maybe you can just sort of cut corners on both and say, all of a sudden, Shabbat, instead of being 24 hours long, it's only like 23 hours, something like that. You know, well, uh, really, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. But maybe you can say, listen, come on, you know. Eh? And then people start saying, listen, you know, turning on a light is really not lighting a fire. It's not exactly the same thing. And also the same thing as, you know, you 
you're in your car, and your car is not really, you know, it's not if you, it's not really the same exact thing. And you have to go to synagogue, so you know, and using a microphone, it's not exactly the same thing as also lighting a fire. That does, and all of a sudden you find all sorts of leniencies, and it ends up you cut from here and you cut from there. That's what's called conservative. You conserve a little bit, you give away a little bit. So you have to watch out for that. Because the whole point of the whole thing is to serve God. And that's the whole point. The point is, is to serve God. And serving God means you want to do as much as possible. Right? You want to do as much as possible. But on the other hand, the Rebbe says, one of the things that God wants is that we should be in the world. We have to fix up the world. And so now we can understand, according to this, what it says in the Midrash. And we'll just have to start this. We won't be able to finish it. Now we can understand what it says in the Midrash, that when a person is attached to Two, two explanations in the Midrash, they explain two ways of a Jew in the time of Gullus. I'm, I'm sorry, it's not, the, it's not the Talmud. I said it was the Talmud in the Midrash. Two different explanations in two different places in the Midrash. Since God sent the Jewish people into this world, and in the world, he put us into exile. And we are now under Ahasuerus. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> we are under Ahasuerus. And even in Israel, right? He's always worrying about what does America think? What does Russia think? What does this guy think? What does that guy think? What does France think? Well, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. So really, even in Israel, where there happens to be a Jewish leader, we're still under, we're under the pressure of the world. What does the United Nations say? Oh, I hope they don't give us another, another condemnation today. That's so terrible. So we're, the fact is we're under Ahasuerus. <clears throat> but who put us here? God. Does God want us to stay here? Uh, you know, obviously not. We, we're supposed to wait for Mashiach. We pray for Mashiach, you know, all day long. We're praying for Mashiach. All the prayers, maybe Goyal, leave Nebanam. We're praying for God to send the Mashiach help. But nevertheless, all the time we're here, we have to say that somehow or other, this is God's will. Huh? And that I'm here right now. The next second is up to me to get out. But right now, here I am. So this is a law in the Torah. Dina the Malchut, Dina. The law of the country where you are is the law. So therefore you might think, all of them matters of the world, matters of the world, not in things which are connected to the Torah of the mitzvahs. <clears throat> so you might think, that together you can have two opposites. That in matters of the world, I can't do like Haman and Mordechai together. Namely, Haman said, pay attention to the world, and Mordechai said, don't pay attention to the world. I can't do these two things together. If you combine this with the fact that we are now in exile, that we can be the lo yichrav that you can, like Haman said, that you have to, <clears throat> I am the king, and Mordechai said, no, Hashem is the king. Don't bow down. You can't do both together. Shekein mimanashach, because if God sent the Jew into exile, so maybe we can say that the Jews, a little bit at least, they have to go according to nature. But if the Jews are not in exile, <clears throat> that we're always connected to God, then then we have to do like Mordechai. Don't bow down, don't do anything according to the non-Jews whatsoever. <clears throat> so therefore, you can't do on both of them. <clears throat> so the Rebbe says like this, in regarding to what the Jewish people are supposed to do according to the Torah, this is obvious. That on this, no one can tell a Jew what to do. But in regard to permissible things in the world, how is it possible that he can do according to the way the Haman wants, according to nature, according to the world? How is it going to be? So here, we, now the argument is, is narrowed down. In things of Torah and mitzvahs, we're not talking about. There's no way to make any concessions. Things that are forbidden, for sure we're not going to do. But what about things that are in the middle, that are a little, that are, are permissible according to Torah, but they're worldly? Says the Midrash, Shabbat morning. what are we talking about? That there's a, con there's a contradiction between a Mordechai and, and, and Haman want. This is what we're talking about, how the world goes, but no, I go Olam. That's what it says. The way the world goes, you can't have two ships going through a place that's narrow, only place for two ships, and both of them go on the same side. You can't have two opposite winds blowing at the same time. And that's the way the world goes. Although, but regarding God, 
God is above nature. You can have two opposites. A Jew can be found in the world, and he can be found in exile. We're servants of Akashverosh under the American government, the English government, the, 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 the Russian government. And together with this, you can be totally above anything that's in the world. Lo Until it causes also Melech Shal Umas Olam, the king, the ruler of the non Jews, Gam, Ala Melech Shal Umat Olam, has shown it the love. It'll have an effect even on the president of the United States. That's what it means when it says, Gamora, to, to do what everybody wants. Do what Mordechai and Haman wants. <clears throat> in the, in the, it means that since, right, and the, and the Gomorrah, it doesn't say that this is impossible. Because by means of this, that Mordechai Yehudi stands in a complete, total surrender to God, lo that in no way will he bow down or subjugate himself to anything in the world, <clears throat> anything in the world, he denies totally any even hint of idolatry. So this attaches him to the power of Hashem. That was the power we talked about, about Yehuda in the beginning of the class. This gives him the power that even when he is in exile of Persia under Ahasuerus, nevertheless, he's totally complete. He won't bow down. He won't even bend. He won't bend, I'm sorry. He won't bend and he won't bow down. Until this has even an effect on Haman, that Mordechai and and ends up Mordechai, he becomes he replaces Haman. Mordechai becomes the assistant of the king. And this God gave to every ability of every Jew. This is what we inherited from Yehuda coming close to Yosef, that even when a Jew is in exile, even when a Jew is found in America or whatever, or found. Or he's found in Israel, which is in some ways worse than America. In some ways. Yeshlo at the Brera, he has the ability, the choice. To go according to each and every person. I mean, if you hear some of the Knesset members, how they speak against Torah and against religious people. In America, there's no country in the world that they would allow such a thing like that. Huh? Maybe there's individuals once in a while they that. But here they have Knesset members. Now they're starting to yell back at them and say, no, you can't do it. That he stands as powerful as is necessary for Torah and the commandments of a Bakalini, but everything else, if it's as though he does according to nature, drives on the proper side of the street, dresses in the proper way. Avodah Shazar Lo. He does things which <clears throat> he's doing what Haman wants. Oshi and Ahika Rutsa Mordechai. Oh, should do what Mordechai does. That everything he does, he's above the world, attached to Hashem. Lohim, therefore, it says he never bows down, even though he's doing some of the customs of the country. <clears throat> right? And he's doing them according to what the Torah says. But you might think that he's, he's a little bit, he's bowing down to the customs of the country, isn't he? Says no. The call in Yanim she'enu avod l'shem. I'll give you an example. The, the 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 Queen of England, she knighted, gave knighted to what I think Rev. I, I can't remember his name. A big rabbi, a Chabad rabbi. Reb, um, oh, how could I forget his name? I even know him personally. Anyway, one of the things is is that you have to shake hands with the Queen. And he asked permission if he could not do that because it wasn't according to Judaism. And she said yes, and she didn't. He didn't have to shake hands with the queen, but he did go to the queen and receive the, the, the knighthood, and he did. That's the customs of the country. I think he had to get down on one knee also, right, which is permissible to do. Is showing honor. It depends on a person's will. Of a there's a difference between the generations. The more, more the majority of the generations. <clears throat> They, they, they were, there were all sorts of limitations from outside or decrees that it was not possible for a Jew to be above the exile, much, which is not the case in our generations. You can't. There were places, for instance, when you went into court, you had to take off your hat. 
Uh, are you allowed to do it or are you not allowed to do it? Here, I'll tell you an interesting story, even though we're a little bit beyond the time, but it's a very interesting story. <clears throat> There, there was a story that there was the Rebbe Marash, the fourth Rebbe of Chabad, he had to go into a very high official for some something dealing with Judaism. A very high, he had to go into his house. Maybe he was having a party, they were invited to the party. And he went in with Rabbi Yisrael Salant. Yisrael Salant was a very, very great man. A very, he was like the father of what's called the Musar movement. Anyway, so they went in, and they had to take off their hats before they went in. So Rabbi Yisrael Salant, he took off his hat but with great pain in his eyes, but he did it because he was totally connected to God. To take off his hat, he had no choice. It's a sign of disrespect, right? And also that there were a lot of ladies that were there that were dressed very you know, provocatively and not modestly at all. It was a party. And so he was always looking down and looking down. <clears throat> which is not the case to Rebbe Marash. He went in and he immediately took off his hat with no problem whatsoever. And he looked straight ahead. He looked straight ahead and he looked, he went in. Anyway, they succeeded in what they were doing, what they the request that they made, and they went outside. And Rabbi Yisrael Salant said to the Rebbe, listen, uh, Rabbi, you know, I, I see you're a, a holy person. You're divide, devoted to God. You're a religious Jew. I don't understand what happened when we went in. How could you just take off your hat with no problem whatsoever? So he said, oh, very simple. Look, he showed he had a wig on. He had a wig under his head, under his hat. And he took it out and his head was covered with a wig. But he did according to the customs of the country. And he took off his hat. So what they thought, he was, a, so, okay, good, good, good. That, that's very clever. So, but when we're looking, how could you look straight ahead all the time? I looked over at you and you were just looking straight ahead. So look at these glasses. He gave him glasses that they were sort of thick. And they sort of made everything not clear. You couldn't really see anything clearly through the glasses. So we could see who was the, you know, who was the prince they had to talk to and who was the women, who was the men. You could see, but you couldn't see very much more than that. You know, if they were wearing, you know, uh, uh, deep sea drive diver suits or if they were wearing, you know, you couldn't tell the difference. So they said, look at this. Glass. In other words, you, you can go according to the customs of the country, but you have to be clever as well. But in, in these cases, he made six, he made, he made the, how do you say, uh, exceptions, there's a better word for it, <clears throat> to the, to the uh, as we'll talk about God willing more tomorrow. Now let's do the Yom Yom. It's a long Yom Yom today. Here we go.